Lesson number four, uh, viruses. Uh, that means on this lecture we are going to talk about viruses in a little bit more details. We start with uh, characteristics of the viruses, then we'll talk about um, structure or the main structure of uh, uh, viruses in a little bit more details. After that, we will cover replication of animal viruses. Why animal viruses? Because a replication of uh, animal viruses is very similar, similar to replication of human viruses. And uh, uh, after that, we will stop uh, in a little bit more details on uh, uh, human immunodeficiency virus, uh, influenza virus. And uh, uh, at the end of uh, this lecture, we will talk about prions or prions. Uh, you already know uh, that uh, viruses are not cells because they lack metabolism, means they're not able to produce energy and also they're not able to reproduce by themselves. To reproduce, viruses have to use a host cell. Uh, many different uh, cells can be infected or used by viruses as a host cell. For example, animal cells, human cells, plants, bacteria. All those uh, different types of cells can be used viruses as a host cell. What else we have to know about them? Uh, the uh, viruses are extremely small. They are much, much smaller than bacteria. And because they're so small, they are filterable. So that means we cannot use filters to protect ourselves because viruses go in through the pores of those filters. But viruses actually in their structure have some macromolecules, for example, carbohydrates, uh, proteins like cellular organisms, right? So they have some characteristics of the cells. They also seem as cells can adapt to changing environment. Uh, same as cells, uh, they're able to reproduce using metabolism of the host cell means they reproduce by their own way. However, they are not cells because they have no metabolism. So biologists or microbiologists or virologists just call them living organisms. The classification of the viruses uh, can be based on uh, host range, size, structure of the viruses and uh, their life cycle. The primary classification of viruses is based on host range. I told you that uh, different viruses can use different cells as host cells. So the question is how do viruses pick or choose their host cells? In order for them to choose cell as a host, they have to be able to recognize surface receptors on the surface of those cells. If virus can recognize surface receptors on the cell, on the surface of the cell, then they attach that cell and use that cell as a host. If virus is not able to recognize surface receptors on the surface of the cell, then the uh, virus usually uh, leaves this cell alone and goes and looks for another cell, uh, surface receptors uh, which uh, a virus can recognize. So based on the host range, viruses can be divided into a few groups. Animal viruses, plant viruses, eukaryotic microorganisms viruses, and the last one, bacterial viruses, or we call them bacteriophages. Size. Uh, viruses uh, is a very diverse group. Uh, as you saw this picture at this uh, slide, uh, they can be in different sizes and different shapes, 
but uh, all viruses are extremely small. Uh, they are much smaller than bacterial cells, for example. You see this is a bacterial cell on the bottom of this uh, slide, and uh, they are they're much, much smaller than a human cells. And here in the corner of this picture, you see example of the human cell, and you see uh, this cell is humongous, huge, uh, compared to the viruses. And that explains why they are filterable. Uh, structure of the viruses is next. Uh, in the center of uh, virus, there is always nucleic acid, and it can be in form of DNA or RNA. And this is where all genetic information of this virus is uh, written down. And then, nucleic acid is covered with a layer of proteins, and we call it, we name it, capsid. Capsid. Some viruses on the top of capsid have one more layer. We call it an envelope. An envelope. So if virus has an envelope, we call it enveloped virus. If virus doesn't have an envelope, like for example on this picture, we call this virus naked or unenveloped. The envelope of viruses is made of phospholipids. Some viruses uh, have spikes that are protrude, protruded from the surface of the envelope. So what you have to remember is, even though an envelope is made of phospholipids, but if virus has uh, spikes on the top of the envelope, those spikes are always made of proteins viral proteins. All right, let's get back to capsid. Uh, it's the structural unit of capsid is capsomere. It is a structure or uh, substrate that is made of cores, of course, of proteins. There are three different types of capsomeres you have to know. Helical, capsomere, and this is a picture of virus which is made of helical capsomeres, polyhedral capsomeres, and uh, here's the picture of polyhedral virus made of polyhedral capsomeres, and there are complex viruses. Complex viruses are made of polyhedral head and helical tail, and usually Bacteriophages, remember viruses that are using bacteria as a host cells. So usually bacteriophages are complex viruses. Let's repeat it once again. So capsomeres can be in three shapes. Helical capsomeres, they form helical viruses. Polyhedral capsomeres form polyhedral viruses, and as I said, complex viruses have usually polyhedral head and a helical tail, and those are bacteriophages. Envelope. Um, only envelope. So viruses uh, have envelope in their structure, and uh, I told you uh, that envelope of viruses is made of, of phospholipids. But I hope you also remember that a plasma membranes of cells is actually also made of phospholipids. So that means an envelope of envelope viruses is actually the piece of plasma membranes of the host cell. But if envelope virus has spikes on the top of envelope, remember, those spikes are always made of proteins from that particular virus. Also, please remember, even though enveloped viruses have additional layer in their structure envelope, they still are more sensitive than naked viruses, and therefore naked viruses are more resistant, more stable.